Okay, here is my rebuilt trailing arm. Um, I did have to get a replacement spindle, which kind of sucks because I think I asked the guy to put a GM one in, but I don't think that's, I don't think this is. I think this is a, a newer third party one, which is okay, whatever. I, uh, I destroyed the other one being sloppy with uh, trying to get it out, so whatever. It's okay. Uh, so I've got my spacers, uh, my new spacers marked and just sitting here. Um, so the goal is get this in. There's a, there's a bolt here uh, and that goes through up here. And then there's a, co a big cotter pan that goes there. Um, and then I'm gonna use this motorcycle lift uh, for supporting the weight while I get this all hooked up. I've got to get the um, leaf spring bolt in here and then the sway bar bracket goes on top after the bolt goes through and then that'll hook up here. Once that's in place, I think, you know, it can just hang here uh, and maybe I'll get the leaf spring in today, but I don't know, I have to lower First, I have to lower the exhaust again. And then secondly, I think this is also not seated because there's like no room between the transmission and the exhaust. And there, and this was, that's the way it was. I mean, when I bought it, it was all, I'm not doing anything new here. Yeah, but I think, um, I think this crossbar needs to go up a little more. It feels tight, but I think, I don't know, I might need a couple bashes with a with a uh, dead blow hammer or something. So I'll check back with you when I have this kind of in place. Okay, so I know some of you will be asking about this, so I'm just gonna make this video now. So this is the Van Steel Corvette Composite st Spring. It's the 3300, which for this car should be good. It's for like a smooth ride. It's a small block. It's not making huge power. If I decide to upgrade it later, which I may or may not, I don't know, this engine's a little tired, but I'm hoping it'll last a while. Then I might swap out the spring to a stiffer one if I do all that. But for right now, it's gonna be a moderately powered, uh, you know, typical car, small block Chevy. Um, the differences are weight, six pounds, six six 6.4 actually, roughly, and 37. Uh, for this guy, pretty heavy. And you can see, uh, well, the Van Steel starts off without as much of a bow in it. Uh, one nice thing, and I just unwrapped this, I just took the bubble wrap off. I guess it, it does come with these uh, pre-installed, so you don't need the ones up here. I guess I can get rid of these. Uh, these. But my goal is to get this installed either today or tomorrow before the rains come. So we'll see, but that's basically the look at both of them. Uh, one thing that's interesting about the composite one, and I don't know how well you guys can see this. Let me zoom in. It has a very woody look, very wood. I was like, is this thing made of wood? Look at that. So I don't know if they actually take wood and uh, impregnate it. Maybe they do. I don't know how they make these, but uh, whatever they do, it makes it light, uh, hopefully. I'll install it correctly. I know there are kind of some specific instructions as to how to go about doing this. I know I have to get the car back on the ground, you know, before I t start tightening things down. But if I can just get it uh, basically, you know, installed in place and then I'll worry about final adjustments later, that would be great. Uh, I'm going to save the original, you know, just because I have most of the original components for this car. Not all, but it's mostly an original car. It's just, it was just beat up and it has a few replacement things like the intake manifold, but, uh, you know, you can get the original, you can get the original, um, intakes, the, the iron ones, like those are a dime a dozen right now. So, all right, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them below. I'll try to answer them or you can go to the Van Steel website and check it out for yourself. All right. So that's the, uh, camber just... installed now i've got the composite leaf spring here uh ready to go and there's the plate i had marked which way is going forward i don't think it really matters i think this is symmetrical this goes up and then these bolts are uh 13 16ths i believe is that what i have yeah 
13 16 these are the original bolts and just fyi these are the same length i uh saw somewhere somebody said they thought these were different lengths but at least for the 71 same length original bolts cleaned up all right so let's get this in this is why you don't weld uh exhaust in place i mean what a pain in the butt to try to get this bolt in super hard i'm just wrestling trying to push this exhaust out of the way <laughs> all right get back to it all right put the bolts in first with the plate so you can move this then slide the spring in okay success all right so this is just lightly tightened i just tightened it uh to the point where it started to contact the lock washers and I'm going to leave it. It says here torque to 40 pounds and then retorque after 50 minutes. It's covered. I'm assuming that's miles. I'll check the Van Steel website. But leaf springs in and now I can move on to the trailing arms. Okay, just going to show you some of the components for the trailing arm. Uh, in the front, we've got a bolt and a castle nut washer cotter pin to hold that and this goes in uh, this hole and you have to feed it in this way from the inside out and that will go through here and then the cotter pin goes this way through and that'll go through these holes here um, no yes no no, it will not go through. Yeah, it'll go through these holes uh, because you can take the pin out and you can then you can slide these out and change them to do the wheel alignment. That's how you do the alignment. Uh, so that'll go through that little hole there and then just bend it on the other side. And then on the other end, we've got the suspension bolt. I'm just going to call this the leaf spring bolt. And this goes through and it gets one of these on the top right here and then the washer and then that ends up that ends up kind of like that inside and then on the other side we actually don't need this uh on the bottom it gets this down here like that and then another washer the washer and the bolt on the bottom so i'll show you that when it's put together and then this piece these pieces are for the uh sorry these pieces are for the sway bar connection up here so this this will go on that and then it connects here you put this piece under like that and uh and then this goes on top up here and the, the bolts just go straight through down from above so I'm gonna get that together, check back with you so I don't show it later. I'm uh, just using the motorcycle jack to hold this in basically in place to get that lined up in there. And then I have to reach in that opening and get this bolt through, you know, from the back. And to be honest, this is probably the hardest part of this whole job is just getting this bolt. Cause it was hard to get out. I, I can't even imagine getting it in there with my fat fingers, but I might try, uh, I have some, some like vice grip tweezer things. I might just try to get it in there with that and see, I don't know. I'm, I think I have to get under there so I can see what I'm doing, but wish me luck. Not easy. So, um, you guys, you just got to wrestle it through there. Let me try to give you a couple tips. Um, so I backed the bolt out that way. I used these on the very tip right there to because i don't want to damage the threads so i just clipped it right there and it was against that side right and then i put this in i line i align the hole up with a little uh ratchet extension just get just to get the hole lined up right and then i used something like this these guys uh which is a you know like a what are these I don't know what they're called um, to kind of grab it. And you basically have to just like 
move it a little bit at a time, you know, through uh, from in, inside there. And again, you, you see, you can, you can push it. I can't get the camera all the way back there, but you can push it. Um, so I use something like this to get in and then sort of like push the head of the nut, or the bolt rather, push the bolt through. Uh, but it's a pain in the ass. Once you're done with that, uh, just tighten it up. You don't have to crank it too tight. I'm gonna look at the specs, but then you just put your uh, cotter pin, you know, secure it with the cotter pin. I'll do that in a minute. And then uh, it is a lot easier after that point. So the next thing though, is I have to get the weight off of this. I don't want to leave it just sitting here. So uh, I'm going to put this together and I guess I'll figure out how I can get the weight off of this um, and uh, check back with you. Okay, so I got this in. I got the bolt I started. I got this, uh, the hanging bolt for the leaf spring, which is eventually going to go through there. Uh, mounted this. And I know this is ass. I got to replace this, this piece, but I'm not going to do it right now. Um, I just supported the sway bar, rear sway bar with some wire, garden wire. And now I'm putting in the spacers. Um, so they fit like that. See that? And that hole, they just rest against there. So take the tape off and then this, you know, slides up like that around that and then we'll put in the cotter pin by the way uh here's another annoying piece of information the uh bolt is five eighths so you want to get something on that side and then when you go to tighten the castle nut it's 11 sixteenths so there you go i don't know why but that's the way it is all right so here's a couple of interesting things I found. One is the torque spec. You see there, that's the castle nut, number one. So it says 45 to 55 foot pounds. It seems like a lot to me. The other thing that's interesting is, see that? Number three, so it's four, three, and nut. Four is a washer and three is a lock washer. I don't remember it coming with a lock washer, but I have some grade eight lock washers that fit. So I put one on there and I don't know if I'm gonna be tightening that to 50, 50 foot pounds, it seems like a lot, but I'm, I'll get it tight and then I'll put in the cotter pin. All right, so I just uh, kind of hammered this up in here. I wanna show you guys a couple things here. You see that flat spot? So that's for that. Come on, focus. See that? And that's how you know which side it goes on. Also, you see how these are not the same, of course, um, but they look they look kind of the same. Uh, how do you know which direction they go? Letters go up. And I know that because I took a video before I took it apart. And you'll notice it's just a slightly it's like it's slightly raised at this end. So this is the uh, driver's side, in case you're wondering. And that goes in there. Um, so this is gonna go in this way, through. Can I get it through now? Maybe. Not quite, I have to fiddle around with that a little bit. Um, that goes through and then it just gets the castle nut on the, on the outside with a cotter pin, no washer. And then the shock goes down here. Okay, so that's in, looks like that. Um, 70 to 80 foot-pounds on this one. And then a cotter pin. Okay, that's pretty much one side done. I have to finalize uh, the parking brake and the brake lines. And of course the brakes are not on here yet, but got the shock in. Um, I just went with the typical KYB gas adjust shock, um, 30 to 40 foot pounds on this guy. And I've got this preliminarily hooked up. Um, 
that needs to be finished up, you know, when the car's back on, back on the ground. But all I have to do at this point, uh, secure this a little bit better. It's just sitting in there. Um, make sure that's hooked up properly. Get the brakes back in, back on, but that's, that's gonna be a minute. I wanna just get the other side hooked up, get the half shafts hooked up um, before I do too much else. All right, I'll try to get the other side hooked up today. I don't know if I can. It's kind of in the sun and it's hot. So we'll see what we can do. But thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Okay, it's been about a year plus. And the trailing arm is finally back in both sides. Uh, let me show you one thing that was difficult among others. Uh, it was difficult to get this in with this bolt at such an angle. And when you put these in, this is supposed to hang out. On the other side, I did it flush, which means this is like over here. Um, this just allows you to, to stick that in there and hold it in place when you put these in. That was kind of hard. It's also a little difficult because of the angle right now because there's no weight on the car. So it was kind of hard to get this bolt through there. Um, it was a little bit difficult lining that up, not too bad. On the shock, it's weird because the it's an 11 16 on the back side and a 5 8 on the front. I don't know why they do that, but they do. So, but that was okay. That went on pretty easy. You want to use a uh, open-ended side of the wrench on on this side though. If you put a if you put a closed you know wrench on the back side of this and you tighten this bolt down, you're not going to get your wrench out. So just use the the open side of the wrench on that. It makes it life a little easier. Uh, this was still a major pain in the butt, but uh, I did it. Kind of crazy how uh, look how many spacers they have on the outside versus the inside. There's like nothing, but that's the way it was. So I'm assuming uh, that's good. I did put the lock washer on there. Uh, there was not a lock washer when I got the car, but that doesn't mean that that was factory because I think they did probably change the in retrospect um i think they did change the wheel bearings actually uh because they i thought they were loose but it it ended up being the differential so that's a lesson for you guys so i had this car up on the jack when i looked at it at the dealer and i could take the wheel and jiggle it a little right it was moving like this way you know in and out uh, along the top and the bottom and i thought oh the wheel bearings are bad but then when I got it home and I took this off and I, and I could feel it by itself, it actually was pretty uh, tight. And then I realized that all the play was up there in the half shafts. So maybe this, this whole thing was moving is what I was feeling. This whole trailing arm was moving a little bit, not the bearings. Um, so, but now everything's new, everything's been replaced. Uh, I mean, you know, the bearings and everything, the diff is all new, rebuilt. Still need to put fluid in it. Don't forget. Uh, and you know, most of the rubber, everything is new. All this stuff got the Van Steel composite. So the back is coming together. Uh, I have to put the brakes on and do all that. But um, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope this helps you guys.